guys? Welcome to Hip Hughes History. Bang, bang for the learning. And bang, bang, James Garfield. That's right, guys. We're going to do five things that you didn't know about the death of James Garfield. All right, guys. So why don't we giddy up for the learning? We'll do a little bit of it right now. Charles Guiteau is a free-loving communist, baby. Charles Guiteau, maybe not a free-loving communist, but did live in Oneida, the United Community in New York, which was a free love, kind of open marriage, communitarianism, kind of share everything kind of society. They didn't like him very much. They nicknamed him Charles Guiteau, and they actually kicked him out. And he had a lot of failures his whole life. He failed to get into the University of Michigan. He was a failed lawyer in Chicago. He was a failed religious prophet, kind of wrote a, wrote a book that plagiarized and uh, didn't do really well at that. Um, but he did write a little bit of political campaign literature for the Grant administration and then during the campaign of 1880 to get James Garfield elected. So he's now 1881, you know, when uh, James Garfield took over in Washington looking for a job and he actually went in, he saw Garfield and he was bothering the Secretary of State and all of the cabinet members trying to get an ambassador to Paris. But that wasn't going to happen. They actually told him, like literally, get the hell out of here. So he ends up really disgruntled and that's what makes him kind of go over the ledge believing that he's on a mission to kill James Garfield and he's going to do it. So, free loving communist? I don't know. But, uh, giddy up for the party. Here we go. It was Robert Todd Lincoln. Yeah, uh, Robert Lincoln, the son of the uh, deceased president, is really a threer. Um, this is the guy who was in Washington, D.C. when his father gets killed. We're going to talk a little bit in depth in a moment, but he's at the train station where James Garfield gets killed on July 2nd, 1881. And he's also going to be in Buffalo the day that William McKinley gets shot, um, you know, in 1901. So uh, this guy's a threer. I'm not saying he did. It's just kind of a really weird coincidence. But it is at the train station, a uh, train station in Washington, D.C., which was Baltimore back then. And James Garfield's going on vacation. He um, comes to the train station, you know, expecting to get on the train. The Secretary of State's there. Robert Todd Lincoln's there. His son's there. They're all happy to be there. And then uh, Charles Guiteau kind of pops out from behind the president and pops him in the back. And that was really the bullet that's going to end up killing him. He took a second shot, which kind of grazed into his shoulder. And then he's quickly apprehended, and the president is uh, now on the ground. And what does Charles Guiteau yell when he kills the president and he's arrested? I am a stalwart of the stalwarts. Yeah, there's something that goes down in infamy. Not. Uh, the stalwarts were actually a faction of the Republican Party that actually supported kind of the political party system, patronage, the spoils system. I rub your back, you rub my back. Not in a creepy teacher way. But nevertheless, he belongs to that faction and he believes that he's been betrayed. He's betrayed because James Garfield is talking about civil service reform. And he knows that Chester Arthur, the vice president, is also a stalwart. And I think Charles Guiteau in his kind of mental mind thinks that because Chester Arthur agrees with him, he was in the kind of along that faction of being a stalwart, that if he kills the president, then you know he can kill the civil service reform. So that's that's the reason that he said that he did it. And boy, did he say that he did it. He actually visited the jail in uh, D.C. to scout it out because he knew he would be going there. He wrote a letter to General Sherman basically asking for protection so when he killed the president, the mob wouldn't get him. So this is a guy that's making no secrets about it. When he chose the gun out, he like chose a special gun with a bronze or a silver plate because he thought it would look good in the museum. So this is a guy that has uh, illusions of grandeur. And bang, bang, he certainly did it. July 2nd, 1881, the deed is done. It's Robert Todd Lincoln. Garfield's death sucked, like big time. Like all death sucks, but some death sucks uh, more than other death. And if you look at presidential assassinations, JFK went instantly. You have uh, President Lincoln, who you know survived for a few hours, really in a conscious state. You have William McKinley, who lasted, you know, a week and a half, something like that, and um, that wasn't good. 80 days for James Garfield. 80 days in tre tremendous pain. There was actually two inventions that kind of sprung forth from the assassination. It was so hot in the summer of 1881 that the Navy engineers came in and really built one of the first air conditioners using blocks of ice and fans and direction. They lowered the room something like 20 degrees. And it was uh, Alexander Graham Bell who really invented the first metal detector that they were trying to use to locate the bullet. The only problem was, was the coils and the bed springs uh, 
messed up kind of the, you know, the magnetation. I'm not a scientist. And when the surgeons put their big, ugly, fat, dirty fingers in the president's wound, they went the wrong way and they made it worse. And uh, it's a terrible, terrible death. He had um, infections and pus-filled pox and uh, pneumonia, um, aneurysms. He, he, it was really not a good thing. So 80 days, he's going to die. And then we're going to get the trial, really, of the century at that point. Charles Guité is going down like a clown. A crazy man. Cray cray. Charles Guiteau's trial in um, the 1880s is really one of the first national trials where somebody's trying out the insanity defense. It doesn't work. Um, there's actually a split between the lawyers and Charles Guiteau, where Charles is saying, I'm legally insane, but I'm really sane, and... His defense team is making the argument this guy is loony bins and mentally insane all the time. It doesn't work either way. He's convicted. He even sang. He sang for the jury. He sang John Brown's body at the trial. Um, he's convicted. He's sentenced to hang for the death of the president. And he actually danced to the gallows and read poetry and shook the hands of his executioner. So you can, you can come to your own conclusions about the sanity of Mr. Charles Guiteau. So let's look at how it's all just so ironic. that it's so ironic is because the main reason that he killed James Garfield was to kill civil service reform. Chester Arthur, who became president, and, you know, there was actually a little bit of a constitutional crisis in there for a little while because the president was alive, but he wasn't doing well. He really couldn't perform his job, and we didn't have the 25th Amendment. Um, but luckily, it was in the summer. Congress wasn't in session. I believe that James Garfield only did, like, an extradition kind of procedure. That was the only thing that he did as president. He met with his cabinet once, and then suddenly, you know, here's Chester Arthur, who is going to be the president. And, of course, Chester Arthur is going to lose in 1885 to Grover Cleveland. So he's, you know, somebody who was never really elected in the first place. So he feels as though it's his duty, not really winning power, but taking power through the death of a president, to continue the legacy of what James Garfield would want, which is civil service reform. And we get the Pendleton Act in 1883. And the Pendleton Act is everything that Charles Guiteau was trying to stop by killing the president. So perhaps by him killing the president, he actually hastened the passage of civil service reform. So there you go, guys. That's James Garfield. You know a little bit about his death now and a little bit about some of the weird stuff in American history. So get up there, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Press my buttons. And if you haven't pressed that funky big red button right there, you should do that because it will bring uh, magical unicorns to your doorstep to grant your every wish. It'll also subscribe you to Infuse History. Where attention goes, energy flows, guys.